Hi, folks. You're not going to believe what's going on. There's a company in New Jersey that's planning to bury millions of tons of hazardous waste carbon dioxide beneath the floor of the Atlantic Ocean. They are planning to build a huge coal power plant in Linden, New Jersey, which will pump 700 million tons of hazardous waste carbon dioxide beneath the floor of the ocean, hoping it will stay there forever. My name is Peter Montague. For the past 35 years, I've been a college professor, environmental researcher, and investigative reporter. In recent years, I've been investigating the coal industry, which has a plan for solving the global warming crisis. They call it clean coal. Before I get into the details of clean coal, I thought I'd tell you a little story that illustrates what clean coal is really about. During the 1980s, I worked at Princeton University for 10 years. Back then, my colleagues were on the cutting edge of energy research. They were studying energy efficiency and energy conservation, and they were always having to scramble for funding. More recently, however, my former colleagues have shifted focus. A few years ago, they began studying and advocating for clean coal, and they now have a $20 million corporate grant with which to do their work. The $20 million grant is the largest corporate donation Princeton University has ever received. This tells you something about what's at stake in the clean coal debate. A tremendous amount of money is at stake. Clean coal is a phrase invented by the coal industry. They came up with it because they're in really deep trouble. In the U.S., the coal industry is the biggest single source of carbon dioxide, the gas that is heating up the planet and causing the climate crisis. Because everyone now knows that coal is the dirtiest of all fuels, plans for new coal power plants are being canceled left and right. Five years ago, there were 150 new coal power plants on the drawing boards. But since then, 101 of the 150 plants have been canceled or seriously delayed. So, when coal company executives look into their crystal ball, the future of the coal industry looks really grim. If something drastic doesn't happen soon, in 50 years, there aren't going to be any coal power plants left. To fix this problem, the coal industry hired a public relations firm to help convince everyone that the solution to the climate crisis is to burn more coal. You heard me right. The coal industry wants us to believe that the solution to global warming is to burn more coal. The PR firm came up with the phrase clean coal. It sounds great, doesn't it? Who could possibly be against clean coal? In reality, we should all be against clean coal. Clean coal just means adding a Rube Goldberg end-of-pipe filter onto a coal power plant to capture most of the carbon dioxide, which is also known as CO2. That's really all the phrase clean coal means. Unfortunately, with clean coal, the dirtiest parts of the coal industry remain the same. Clean coal does nothing about mountaintop removal mining or long wall mining, the kind they do in Pennsylvania, both of which devastate land, water, farms, and communities. Clean coal doesn't eliminate coal slurry impoundments containing millions of tons of toxic waste. Clean coal does not make coal power plants good neighbors. They still pump out soot by the ton, clogging your lungs and causing birth defects, asthma, heart disease, and cancer. Really, clean coal is just the same old dirty coal industry with a CO2 filter tacked on. After the CO2 is captured as a gas, it is then put under tremendous pressure to turn it into a liquid. Then it is sent somewhere through a long pipeline, and eventually it is pumped about a mile below ground, hoping it will stay there forever. At least that's the plan. No one has actually done it yet except in the form of small experiments. This is called Carbon Capture and Sequestration, or CCS for short. CCS means pumping billions or trillions of tons of liquid CO2 a mile below ground, hoping it will stay there forever. I say hoping it will stay there forever because no one can be certain what will happen to it after it is pumped below ground. Scientists working on behalf of the coal industry say the CO2 will probably not leak back out of the ground and cause global warming. But what if they're mistaken? 
What happens if we pump CO2 below ground for, say, 50 or 60 years, only to learn that the CO2 is finding its way back to the surface, getting into the atmosphere, and warming the planet uncontrollably? Scientists working on behalf of the coal industry admit that if even 1% of the buried CO2 leaks back into the atmosphere each year, it will heat up the planet. These same scientists say that the chances of leakage are very slim, but they also say that the chances of leakage are not zero. In other words, they admit that leakage is a real possibility. So here's a plausible scenario that should concern all of us. We start pumping CO2 into the ground. For the first few years, things look good. We announce that we are succeeding. Then China starts pumping CO2 into the ground. Then England. Then France. Then India starts doing it. Then Brazil. Then Russia. In the next 50 or 60 years or so, we manage to pump a couple of trillion tons of CO2 a mile below ground. Everyone knows that if even 1% of it starts leaking back out each year, the planet will be cooked. But they also know that if it starts leaking back out, there will almost certainly be no way to stop it. Once leakage starts, chances are we'll heat up the planet to levels that are intolerable, perhaps even ruining the Earth as a suitable home for the human species. So clean coal advocates are betting the future of the planet. They're betting that their knowledge of the Earth's geology and chemistry, a mile below ground, is so perfect today that there won't be any unpleasant surprises in the future. There's a word for this, hubris. It means arrogance. It is the arrogance of technologists who are so in love with their technology that they've lost sight of their own human limitations. They have come to believe that they are infallible. So the ethical question is, why should we ever risk ruining the planet? So far as we know, the Earth is the only place in the universe where humans can live. The Earth is our only home, and we would be unbelievably foolish to risk ruining it. And for what? Just to save the coal industry from going extinct? Let's face it, folks, the coal industry is a dinosaur, and it deserves to go extinct. There are perfectly good alternatives already in service and available today. Much greater efficiency, conservation, wind, solar, and geothermal. But these clean coal advocates are relentless. The first full-scale clean coal project in the U.S. is the one proposed for Linden, New Jersey. Linden is a small city in central New Jersey where the air is already hazy with toxic emissions from power plants and oil refineries. To many people, including me, it seems grossly unfair that these clean coal projects are being proposed in communities that are already burdened with more than their fair share of toxic air. Anyway, the proposed coal plant in Linden is called Purgen. Purgen is slated to be a 750 megawatt coal power plant that will use at least 2 million tons of coal each year. Purgen will capture most of its own CO2, plus gather CO2 from other nearby industrial sources, pressurize it into a liquid, send it through a 100-mile-long pipeline out into the Atlantic Ocean, and then pump it a mile and a half below the ocean floor. To grease the skids for this Rube Goldberg project, Purgen has hired a lawyer named Bradley Campbell, who used to run the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. Mr. Campbell has been holding private, high-level meetings with his former colleagues in state government, convincing them to go along with this polluting plan. Really, this is the radioactive waste story all over again. Now citizens are having to mobilize to oppose the burial of hazardous waste CO2 in the Atlantic Ocean. Every environmental group in New Jersey is opposed to this project, but there are a couple of big national environmental groups that say they are in favor of clean coal. They are the Natural Resources Defense Council, NRDC, and the Clean Air Task Force. As it turns out, these big groups have accepted very large sums of money from friends of the coal industry to promote clean coal. NRDC has received $1.2 million to promote clean coal, and Clean Air Task Force has received $1.6 million to promote clean coal. 
NRDC is so enthusiastic about burying CO2 in the earth that Bradley Campbell is saying NRDC has looked favorably on the coal plant in Linden. But the bigger question for these major national groups is, even though the risk may be small, why are you willing to tolerate any chance of ruining the planet as a place suitable for humans? Is it just because friends of the coal industry are paying you millions to advocate for clean coal? Surely you can do better than that.